everyone and welcome to another video from focus your ads in this video we're going to be talking about how to set up conversions in your google ads using google tag manager so let's get started first thing you're going to need to do is actually set up your tag manager account so we're going to come over here to tag manager so it's tagmanager.google.com and we're going to go create account and we're going to name this account something it doesn't really matter uh, but name it something to do with your business so in this case we're doing conversion We'll call conversion test, but you could call this whatever your business name is. That's what I would use. Select your country, type in your website here. So I'm going to grab my website here. This is my test website. Copy that in, paste it in here. So you'll see that it can't have this. So I'll remove the HTTPS and just call it conversion setup dot UB pages. Then we click on web here and go create. And we say yes as long as you agree to all these terms. And now we have our new Tag Manager account set up. So what we're gonna do here is just copy these two pieces of code out. Uh, depending on your website, it's gonna depend on how you install it. So I'm not gonna go over exactly how to install this because you're gonna have to put this in your website. Some website builders, you can just implement this with just this number here, the GTM and that number. Other websites are gonna require you to install it in the head and in the body, just like it's saying here. So you're gonna to have to look up your different website to install it. So if you're using Unbounce, it's pretty simple. Just come under here under uh, settings and you're gonna see the script manager, click on that. And then over here we have add a script. So you're gonna click add a script. You're gonna change this over here to Google Tag Manager and you're gonna enter in that GTM number I just showed you here. So it's just this number that's down here. You're gonna grab that number and you're gonna paste it in over here. And that's gonna install it. So I'm gonna do that right now. I'm gonna take that number here, copy it over and paste that in and hit add script details. And the last step here, if, if you're using Unbounce, you're gonna have to make sure you check off the, the script that you wanna, the place that you wanna use your script and we're gonna go save and publish. Now it's implementing that code. So it's doing the, it's doing all this work in the background for you. It's adding this into the head and it's adding some into the body. So if you're not using Unbounce, uh, you're going to have to look up the instructions for uh, how to install Google Tag Manager on your website. It's usually pretty simple. So once that's completed, you're going to want to test it. So come over here and let's grab our website here. Copy that and we're going to paste it in. So I do want back to our Google Tag Manager and we're going to go test. So if you've already closed this, I'll show you where to find it. So if you close that, you can come over here to admin and then you're gonna find this under install tag manager here. And then you can see there's this, you can paste it in, hit test, and you'll see the green check mark pop up if it is working properly. So to understand a conversion, just before we get going further, a conversion is an action, an important action on your website. It doesn't matter what that action is. In this case, I'm gonna be showing you how to set up for phone calls and I'm gonna show you how to set up for form completions. Those are two important actions that I see on a lot of websites. Other actions could be add to carts, checkouts, purchases, but they have a little more, there's a little more to those ones. Um, if you're using certain apps, you can install it pretty simply, but there is ways to do it in Google Tag Manager as well, but we're not getting into that in this video. So we're gonna talk about how to set up for form completion and how to set it up for your phone calls. All right, so the first thing we wanna do is we wanna go over to Google Ads and we're gonna go under our conversions here. So go into conversion goals summary and we're gonna add our first conversion. So if you have other conversion, that's fine. We're gonna add in our form completion conversion and we're gonna add two for uh, phone calls and I'll show you why we're adding two. So let's do one here. This is gonna be for our form completion. So we're coming in here and we're gonna go, so we're gonna grab your website here, copy that in, paste it in here. Uh, we hit scan, it's the only way to get past this. We're not gonna use what it's scanning and we're gonna go here to add a conversion action manually. You might see another box here, but that's okay. Just skip down until you see this add a conversion manually and we're gonna click into that and we're gonna grab our submit lead form. And we're gonna click this down over here, make sure it's on primary because we wanna count this primary conversion and we're gonna call it something like submit lead form. So we could even have GTM after that for Google Tag Manager. Then we come down here, we're gonna select if we want to add a value to it. I'm gonna have no value here, but you can add a value if you want. So you can add a value, it could be a dollar, it could be uh, $10. So if you understand the value of each form completion for your business, then you might wanna add a value in here. 
you could do an estimate, it doesn't have to be perfect. Say it's $100 for an actual conversion for you, that's the value of someone that actually converts, then maybe it takes 10 email forms to get to an actual conversion. So then you could divide that 100 by 10, and now you come up with a $10 cost per conversion, because you know that every form is going to earn you approximately $10. So you could do that if you want, or just put it as no value. So we're gonna come down to the next section here, and under count, we're gonna say, change it to one. So I only want to count one conversion because if someone fills this form out multiple times or maybe the system just counts multiple conversions, we only want to track once per person. So this next section here is means that you have 30 days for someone to convert. So if they click on your ad, they have 30 days to convert and essentially a conversion in this case is filling out your form. So if they fill out the form within 30 days, then that is going to count as a conversion in Google Ads. If they don't, and if it takes longer, then it won't count as a conversion. You can extend this out if you want. So you have 90 days up here or you could shorten it up if you want. 30 days is the standard and it usually works pretty well. Uh, engage view conversion window. This is the same type of thing, except for it's a different metric being measured. And we have view through conversion window here as well. So that's someone that's just viewed your ad, hasn't actually clicked on it. And we want to count that. So most likely if in that case, you probably only want to have a short time period. The default here is usually fine. So attribution, usually I'd leave this as recommended since we only have two choices now between last click and data driven. Data driven is gonna be your best option in this case. And then we have this down here, enhanced conversions. So this, if you don't see this check mark here, we're gonna to have to fix that up and I'll show you where to find that. But for now, if uh, just make sure it's checked off if you have this check mark. If not, don't worry about it, we'll come back to it. And now you can hit done. Now we have our leads form in here. We're gonna hit save and continue. And from here, what, what we can do is we can go to use Google Tag Manager and we're going to look at this these details here this is the information we're going to use now to set up our google tag so we're going to jump over to google tag manager and just set this up right away and that way we can start getting it connected so in google tag manager you're going to come under tags so now that we're in google tag manager the first thing we want to do is actually set up one other tag that allows google ads to track things better so we go new and what we're going to do is we're going to add our conversion linker tag which is something that helps google ads track properly so just click on this tag configuration here and over to Google Ads and we have this conversion linker tag click on that one and we're gonna check off this first box here to enable linking between all pages and down here we have this here triggering so we can go over here and we're gonna go all pages so now it's gonna trigger this tag on every single page I know we haven't named it yet but just hit save and watch it comes up with a conversion linker so it saves you some time you can hit save or you could have just named it there so now we have conversion linker, which is a tag that you need to have on there to help track conversions properly. Now we're going to set up another tag here. This is going to be our actual conversion. So hit new and in here, we're going to click on tag configuration. We're going to go under Google ads again, make sure you're not clicking on a Google tag. It's actually Google ads up here and we're going to go to Google ads conversion tracking. Click on that one. And before we go any further, let's actually name this one. So let's go back to our Google ads. I'm going to copy this submit lead form. That's what we named it in Google ads. And we're going to paste it in here. And I'm going to just name this one tag. Oops, that's not where I wanted to paste it. <laughs> copy that out. So uh, we want this up here. There we go. And we're going to name it tag. So we'll fix this up here in a second. Erase this. So erase that. So we got submit lead form up here. Now we're going to add in our conversion ID. So we're going to come over to Google ads. So this is why I did this at this point, because it's easy to come in here, double click, copy that. And we're going to go back to our conversion ID, paste that in, go back to Google ads again, double click, copy that. And we're going to paste that in under conversion label. So you see there's one for a conversion ID. That's going to be the same for all your conversions. Conversion label is going to be different for each conversion. So that's, that's all we need to do in there. We are going to edit this later and we're going to add in some, something down here to make it work with enhanced conversions, but we'll get there in a second. The next step here, the most important step for any conversion is when does it trigger? Now trigger happens in a few different ways. For one, you could have a page load that could be a trigger. Um, we have a few different options and we already set up a trigger on the other conversion that was all pages. So we want to set up a new trigger, but we have to look at our website to figure out when we want to trigger that. 
So for now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit save on this and we're not going to worry about it. We're going to save tag without the trigger. And what we're going to do is we're going to preview our website. So we're going to hit preview here. And now we're going to paste our website into this section here. So we're going to grab our website, copy it out and paste it in here. And we're going to hit connect in here. Now we can see that we're connected. You can see that this here is blue and we got the blue up here and it says connected. So we are connected. We can say continue here and you can see this page here is now uh, being controlled in a way by this page. So this page is feeding that extra bit of information that we had in our tags into here. Even though we haven't made it go live yet, it's now giving us a preview of what's going to happen. So what we need to do is I can see this information here, which is great. You can see our tag conversion linker has fired. This means that that tag is present on this page. So the next thing we want to do is test out a conversion. So we're going to come in here. We're going to click on request a quote. So this you're going to have to do this. It's going to be different for every website. Um, I'm going to move this over to the side here, somewhere down there. And we're going to write in our name here. We're going to write in our email. Let's go with support at focusyourads.com. That's my working email. And then we're going to write in a phone number here, which let's just do one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Some forms won't allow you to do that. You might have to put an actual thing in and it doesn't really matter what we do. Let's do a power washing request. So this is what we want to trigger. So this is what a conversion is going to be. So if I come over here, I can see that, see we're in our connected we can start seeing that stuff is starting to populate here. And when I hit submit, we're going to see more information come up. So I can hit submit. And now we should go back over here and we should see some more information came up. So we have these all down the, along the side here. You can see there's different things that have happened. Now, the one I'm interested in here is this form submit. Now, not every website is going to do it this way. And if you don't see form submit or form submission or something to that effect, then you're you're gonna have to. There's some other things you're gonna have to do to get your tag to work properly, and uh, I'm not sure if we'll get into that in this video right now. But for now, form submit is here, and we do have this. So you can see, if I click on variables, so th there's these different sections here. We have the data layer, we have variables, um, the data layers here as well. This one is going to show us an event. And so you can see the same event in uh, under here. So what we want to do is we want to grab this. And um, if you see GTM form submit, we could have, we could do this directly in our, I'll, I'll show you two different ways we can do this. I'll show you, show you both ways because you might see something different in here and it might not fire properly if you don't set it up the way I'm going to show you. So there's two different ways. So let's take this, copy this out. Uh, the first thing we want to do is go back into our our tag. So this is our form submission tag. And we're going to add a trigger onto this. So we're going to come in here, click onto the trigger section, and we're going to go this big plus or little plus button up in the right corner there. Add that. And we're going to name this trigger. Let's call it form submit. Doesn't matter what you name it. Uh, and we could just add in trigger just to keep it clear. Now we can click on this trigger configuration here and we are going to add a custom event. So there's two different ways and I'll show you both here. One, we can do form submission. And if you have a standard form submission, this is going to work for you. If not, then you might have to do a custom event. Either way, we'll do pretty much the same thing. If I had to lean towards one, I would try form submission first. So this one, you can just add the form submission. You can make sure that it's, if you have multiple forms, and you only want one form to fire, you can now say some forms and we can go page URL and we can grab the page URL where this is firing. So we could grab the home page on this. There's other things we can do to prevent it from firing in all forms. If you have a simple website and you only have one or even two forms, it doesn't really matter too much if you're just trying to track a contact form. So you can come here and click all forms. Check validation is something you could look at using in the future, but right now, just keep it simple. Don't even check off these. Check validation, what it'll do is it'll only, it'll only fire the form if someone actually goes through with the form submission. But in this case, it's not going to trigger until the form submitted, so I'm not going to worry about check that off. I'm going to hit save on this. 
and I'll show you what it looks like and then I'll show you what you can do if it doesn't fire properly. So let's do a test here. So let's go preview. So continue. Now you can see down here tags not fired. So this one's not firing. This one has fired. So this one's not going to fire until we submit our form. So we're going to test and see if this form submits. So we're going to come back to our website. Oh, actually, before we do, uh, we want to make sure if you have another version of your website open, make sure it's the one that's connected. You can see that by these dots up here. So make sure it's the connected one and then go to your request quote. You can start to see some stuff happening here. So request quote, We'll move this down again and we're going to type in our name, email, doesn't really matter what you use for a test and a phone number just to get through all the mandatory fields and we're going to hit request a quote and now we'll find out if it's triggered so we come here and we can see form submit here and form submit so we can see it fired it actually fired twice and this is why I would be hesitant to um, set it up so we are tracking in here tracking every click or every time it goes through because you might end up with multiple forms but if you have it set to only track once it's only going to track one of these form submissions so it now fired the tag so it did work on my case so but if it didn't work for you then and you have a different form submit or you maybe you don't see the GTM or you see something different here you can what you can do is you can copy this information from the event so you copy that information and again that could be found in the data layer you can find it here, form submit. So you can copy this out. We can come into our Google Tag Manager and we're gonna click into our tag again. And down here under triggering, we can now, if you had this one here, you can hit this minus button to remove it. And we can click on this here. And now we can create a new tag again, plus sign up here. And we're gonna create another one. We could call this one, oops, form submit. We can call it custom event custom event trigger just to keep it separate so we know what the difference is then we come here click on this and now you're going to come down here to custom event now that that event that you saw in here is an event um, a custom event so we can now paste that custom event in here and now anytime this event shows up in our on our website it will fire this form so we can hit save and again, we can add extra parameters if we want to make sure it only fires on certain pages. But for now, let's keep it simple and just add this. We can hit save and hit save. And now it's going to fire only when this custom event goes off. So we're going to test it one more time here. So we're going to hit preview, hit continue. And now it's connected already. So we're going to come in here. We're going to fill out our form again. This is going to be very repetitive filling out our form. and hit submit. Now we're gonna come over here and now we can see that our form has fired. So we have, you can see that this form, it hasn't fired here, but it fired down here. And you can see it fired right there because of the form submission, form submission it fired. So I'd prefer it only to fire once, but it's firing twice in just the way that the form is set up. So that's okay. We have it now firing. And again, we're only tracking, we're, we're preventing it from duplicating leads because we're preventing that in Google ads. So we're preventing this doubling up. And there's other ways you can set up your triggers as well. So if this doesn't work, there are other options, but those are two really popular options that work really well. So another one could be setting up a thank you page. So if your form redirects you to a thank you page, you could set this up and I'll show you that one really quick here. I won't even test it, but I'll show you what it would be like. So I'd erase that one. I'd come here to triggers again, and we're gonna go add the trigger one more time. And we're gonna pick a trigger. This time we do page view and we are going to have it only view on some pages, change this to the URL, and then we'd want to have thank you or whatever's inside your thank you page. So this is the URL up here. So it'd be as long as you have thank you somewhere in that URL, then you could add this in. If you have something different that comes up or maybe you have a string of numbers or something, you could add this in here and it's only going to fire when that page comes up. So having a thank you page come load after the fact can help you track your conversions. The only reason I don't like using this one as much is because when you're tracking enhanced conversions, which we'll get into in, in later in this video, enhanced conversions doesn't track properly a lot of times when you reload to a thank you page. So I prefer to have it triggered by an actual form submission. So I'm gonna discard this one for now. 
we're gonna go back, we're just gonna add my, let's do our form submit here, and let's save that one. So I've added that one back on. Once we submit this, we'd be tracking our form submissions. I'm not gonna submit it yet because we can go back and do this later, but let's go on to the next one here. So let's go on and say to our Google Ads account and say done. Now what we wanna do is we wanna add in a new conversion here. So go create conversion. And we're gonna add in phone calls. So click on phone calls. And we have calls from ads using call extensions or call only ads. So click on that one. So this is gonna be tracking directly from your ads. It's not tracking from your website this time. So this is a really easy one to set up. So we go continue. And we're gonna name this one. Let's go phone calls from ads. And usually I'll put the number in after this. So we're gonna come down here, you can set no value or you can set up a value if you want. Um, in this case, I'm gonna put it as one again for count and 60 seconds. This one's important. So if you have a phone call and uh, you set this really low, you could be counting spam as actual calls. So what I would recommend for this is actually determine how long a proper phone call is for you. If it's 60 seconds on average, then maybe you have this down to 40 seconds. But if your calls are typically two minutes or longer, then maybe increase this to like a minute and a half or something like that. You wanna be just below where an actual call would come in. So that way you don't end up catching any of that spam that might keep you on the phone for maybe a minute or maybe 30 seconds. Then it counts as a conversion inside your ads and what's gonna happen is you're essentially feeding Google bad information. We wanna feed Google only great information. So the higher we can have this, the better, but it has to be able to capture your actual phone calls. So we're gonna say create and continue from here, and we're gonna go continue. We're done. So now that one's done. So that one's gonna be for any kind of call extensions that you set up. So if you set up a call extension on your ad, that's gonna be where it's tracking. Now, we're gonna continue here in a second but first let's take a step back and go to our goals and go to settings instead of up to summary and there's a few settings in here we want to go over so for one call conversion actions so we want to set this up here so call conversion actions so this is how we're going to be tracking our call conversions so make sure that this one here is set to the one we want so in this case we just created this one phone call from ads, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. So we hit, go over here and hit save. So the next one down here is enhanced conversions for leads. So make sure that this one's checked off if you're tracking leads. So as soon as you check it off, there's gonna be another menu down here. We have Google Tag Manager. So click on that, make sure it's on Google Tag Manager and hit save. Then we're gonna come down to the next one here, which is enhanced conversions. We're gonna do the same thing. If it's not checked off, check it off and then select Google Tag Manager as the option and then hit save. And before we continue on making our conversions, I do wanna go over one setting here. So go to your account level settings. And in here, there's gonna be some options here. You have call reporting, so you can click into that. Now we do wanna track our call reporting. So you're gonna turn this one on. The next one down here, do you wanna save your call? So this is actually gonna save your call recording. So the way Google tracks phone calls is it has a forwarding number. So someone will phone this forwarding number. They go through and it'll come to your phone. Now they can track that information and they're even gonna be able to record that call. So if you want them, them to record the call, you can hit on here. Just make sure you have something in your privacy policy that talks about this. And if not, you can turn it off. You'd also wanna have some sort of introduction. So saying, hey, this call is being recorded for quality assurance and then it goes into your call. So if you're gonna turn this on, just make sure you have all that set up properly. In this case, I'm gonna turn it off. And down here we have send Google ads call data to a call. So if you're setting it up the way we're doing right now, then don't worry about having this on. If you're using a tool like I'm gonna mention in a bit, uh, I use CallRail a lot of times. And if you use a tool like that, then you'd wanna come in here and turn this on and set it to CallRail. But again, if you're not, then don't worry about it, have it turned off. Okay, so let's go back into our Google Ads and create another conversion. So go under Goals, Conversions, Summary, and what we're gonna find another conversion up here, we're gonna create conversion action, and now we're gonna create our call conversion. This one's actually pretty simple to create. So come over here under Phone Calls, and we're gonna come down here to select the source of phone calls you'd like to track. So you're gonna go to calls to phone number on your website. So this is gonna allow us to track phone calls from our website. So people will go to our website and pick up their phone, dial that number, and we can track that phone call. So we're gonna continue. 
we're going to name this one. Let's, I usually like to name it something like calls from website. And then I'll have the number here after this one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, something like that. So I'd want to match this up to what's on our website. And then again, down here, I'm going to select don't use a value for this conversion. But if you do understand how much it's going to earn you per phone call, then you could set a value on here. Down here, we can go to one because we only want to track it once. So if someone's phoning multiple times, so if they call three times in a row, we don't want to track that as three separate conversions. We only want to track one. There are occasions where maybe you do want to track more than one conversion. So for example, you get a lot of repeat business and every phone call from someone is important to you. Um, and it's not just someone looking for support on what was happening in the last phone call. Then maybe you want to go with every phone call, but in most cases, you probably want to go with one. Then we're going to add our phone number in here. So we're going to pick our country and add our phone number. So one thing be careful of is make sure this phone number is exactly the same as the one on your website. So I'm going to copy this one out and I'm going to paste it down to the next spot here. It says the display number. You want that one to be the same as well. So keep these numbers the same and make sure they match your website exactly. Again, down here we have the call length so we can add a call length. Depending on how long a real call is, you're going to want to set this to that length. So in my case, most times 60 seconds is a good call. And if it's something spam, it's probably going to be dealt with before the 60 seconds. So I'm okay with leaving it at 60 seconds. But if you think you're on the phone longer than 60 seconds on, on occasion with maybe a spam call or something, then turn this up and increase it to something higher because you want it. The goal is to make sure your data is clean. So create and continue. And now we have the option again here to install with Google Tag Manager. So click on that one and we are now given our different IDs. So we have the ID and the label. So ID is going to be the same as before. So we copy that one out and we're going to go back to our Google Tag Manager. Now we're going to go to new. So we're in tags again. We're going to go new tag and we're going to create this time a different tag. So we're going to come in here. Let's, let's first name our tag again. So let's go grab the name of the tag. So we can grab that from here in our Google Ads. Come back over to our Tag Manager and I'm just going to paste that in here. And we're going to go tag and we're going to now come over here and select Google Ads. So again, I just clicked on tag configuration and then Google tag, Google Ads. <laughs> Sorry, having trouble talking. And then we're going to come over here. Now there's a special one for calls. So you go call, Google Ads calls from website conversions. So we click on that one and you can see there's display number here. So we have to first put our display number in. So make sure it's exactly the same as what you had in the original one. So I'd copy it out exactly the same and add that in. Okay, so I'm copying my number out, pasting in exactly the same. And we're going to come over here and grab our conversion ID. And we're going to paste that in. It, oops, losing track of where I am. Paste that into our conversion ID under Google Tag Manager. Move that over there, make it easier. And we're going to take our conversion label and also paste that in. So now we have our phone number, we have our conversion ID and conversion label. And that is it for that. Now this one, the trigger is really easy on this. We want to set it to happen on every page. But instead of just setting it to all pages, I want to do initialization all pages. So this is going to ensure that the tag is fired as quickly as possible. And that way we can track and there's no um, lag in tracking these conversions. And you'll, what you'll see if you put down all pages, you might see that someone clicks on the website and then it swaps the phone number as they're looking at the website. So this helps, this helps it to be a bit quicker and to fire faster. So we want to initialization all pages. Then we're going to hit save. So now we have our phone call conversions tracking in here. So I'm going to preview this again. So hit preview and continue. And now we want to see that this is firing. So we can see it's fired on this page. We could click around to another page if we wanted. Uh, in this case, I don't have any other pages, but if you have multiple pages, you could see if, make sure it's firing in all pages. As you go along, you could click on these top ones here and you'll see that the tags are firing or they're not. Again, the form's not uh, firing because we haven't actually went through a form submission, but we don't need to test that one right now because you already did that. So as long as this one fired, then we are good to go on to the next step. So we want to test our phone number because we don't know if it's swapping properly. So what we can do is we can go to our website here. So take this website and instead of just adding this website here, we're going to add a code at the end of it. So we're going to add this at the very end here where you have Google dash WCC dash 
debug. And this is, and we have a hashtag in here. So hashtag Google WCC debug, just like I have it written here. And we're gonna hit, and this has to be right after your, your main website. So whatever you have for your website, and then this. We're gonna hit enter on this. And what you're gonna see here is uh, nothing <laughs> until you hit refresh. For whatever reason, it wants you to refresh again. So hit enter and then now hit refresh here. And it should show us something at the bottom come up here. Okay, so if it didn't work for you, that's okay. Uh, it didn't work for me either. So what I've neglected to do is submit our changes. So we have to actually submit our changes here. And I'm gonna refresh this to make sure I have the newest copy up here. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna submit this. Right now it's not live. All these changes aren't live. So as soon as I hit submit, these changes are gonna be active now on our website. So just keep that in mind. So I'm gonna hit submit over here and it's gonna ask for a version type. Usually you wanna add something in here so we could say we added uh, call conversions and lead conversions. And then we can hit publish. So what this is doing is now making it live so we can now, uh, this is gonna be active on our website. So we come over here to a workspace again and now hit, actually we don't need to preview this time. Instead of previewing, we're gonna come over here and now it should be the proper version. So we're gonna, paste this google-wcc-debug, or I guess it's hashtag google-wcc-debug at the end of our website, hit enter, and then hit refresh. All right, so it was it's, it sometimes fights me, um, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to incognito window again, paste it in here, and this time it works. So let's, let's try it here. So you can see at the bottom here, we have Google Ads website call conversions. So it's attempting to auto replace. I find it just sits here forever. So what you can do is just say forced and this is what should happen. You should see 99999 all the way across and look around your website. Do you see other numbers in there? If they're not changing, that means Google's not gonna swap them. If you have multiple numbers, you're not gonna be able to do it this way. You'd have to use a different tool, like a third party tool like CallRail to track multiple numbers at once. You can only track the one number at once. So, but in this case we have it's working, so we're tracking our number. So for a simple website with only one number, this is perfect. That's what we want. If you have different variations, you might want to go into your website and just make sure they're all very, all the same. So you have the same, so you don't have maybe one with a one at the beginning or some with brackets, some without. Just keep them all the same. And that way you'll have less problems when it comes to dynamically swapping. So it should swap all the phone numbers that are the same on your website with this 999 number. Okay, last step, we're almost there. So we're gonna go back to Google Ads and we're gonna set up our enhanced conversions. So we kind of left this one hanging so we can just hit next and finish this one up. This is our calls from website. And there you go, now it's, it's good to go. So we're gonna finalize this enhanced conversion stuff. So let's get into it. So this is the newest one we just created, uh, submit lead form GTM. So that's the one we're gonna be working on to add in enhanced conversions. And if you don't have enhanced conversions on, Google's gonna get mad and say, hey, you need to add enhanced conversions because that's the way Google's going. So let's add that in. So in here, and it's, it's not as hard as it sounds, it can be as hard as it sounds, <laughs> but there's an easy way. And uh, the hard way is very hard. The easy way is very easy. So we're gonna do the easy way. And if you decide to try the hard way, um, I'll probably have another video eventually on that. But for now, we're gonna go the easy route. So enhanced conversions. So first thing you have to do is come in here, into your, into your uh, conversion, which is under goals, summary, edit settings. And down at the bottom here, if you didn't have this box before, you should see it now because we went and turned it on in your account and you should be able to check this off and now have enhanced conversions turned on. This is step one. Step two is we need to go into your Google Tag Manager and we have to set this up in here. So you can see we're in our Google Tag Manager, we have our tags here. Now there's one thing we need to set up. We need to set up what's called a variable. So click down to variable here and what a variable is, it's gonna be a temporary place to store information. And we're gonna use that information. So Google's gonna store it there very, it's just temporary, it's just gonna be there for a second. And then Google's gonna pass it back to um, the enhanced conversion uh, section of Google Ads. So what we're, gonna do, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna create a new variable. So user defined variables, we're gonna click new, and we're gonna go here and click on configure variable. Now we're gonna come in here and we're gonna click on this little search bar up here and type in user. And you'll see user provided data. So click on that. And we can change, we're gonna name this guy here. Let's call it user 
provided data, and let's go automatic. Just in case you decide to try a manual one later, do automatic for now. So we're gonna click back. If it did this and it's kind of auto-saved, you can click back into it, and we're gonna change this to automatic. So we want an automatic collection and to avoid manual collection. The way it works here is they have three. Automatic is gonna be the least consistent, the manual is gonna be the second best, and then code is gonna be the best. Code is adding code to your website and hard coding some of this information in there. It's not as easy as it sounds, but if you have someone that's working on your website, that might be a good option for you. Manual means that you're gonna be adding them in manually and selecting different um, areas. So for example, if you have the form has an email spot, uh, email bar that people write their emails in, you'd be selecting that manually. It can get kind of complicated as you can see here, as you have to set up different variables that collect this information. Automatic, it's just how it sounds. It's automatic. So we're going to use that one. So we're going to hit save and that will save this, but we're not quite done. We're so close, so close. Let's go to tags now and finish this up. And we are going to come under here to submit lead form. So this is the one we created already. And we're going to click on tag configuration and down here, you see there's include user provided data from your website. Check that off. And we're going to select this one here, which is the one we just created, that variable. So now what's going to happen as soon as this tag fires, Google is going to check for this information automatically. So as soon as someone submits a form, it's going to check to see what they've written in the email and any other fields that Google can pull out automatically. And it's going to feed that back into Google Ads and allow them to track conversions better. And this is why I like using the form submit. And this is why I like using um, something that happens as soon as they click because the thank you page is a reload so the, all that information is gone by the time they get to that thank you page. It tracks things but it's probably going to make it really difficult to track any kind of enhanced conversions. So let's hit save on this and now we have our setup. The only thing left to do is to preview. So let's hit preview. Continue and let's actually go through with a form submission again. So let's go request. Make sure you're again on the page that's linked. You can tell by these blue dots up here. Uh, where's request? There we go. And put our name in. And let's hit request. So we should see what we should see now is a form submission. Yes, yeah, so we can now see that the form submitted here. That's great. The one other thing we can check on now is our variables because we decided to set up our variables. So we now we have this, you can see our user provided data automatic. And you can see that it's picked up my email address right here. So, and it's on auto. So you know that it's automatically picking up that email address and it's gonna fire that through because we have that tag, this attached to our tag. So now our enhanced conversions should be fixed. I found that sometimes Google still wants you to do the coded way, but at least you know that enhanced conversions is working. And if you want to go ahead and do the manual setup or the code setup, then you already have some enhanced conversions and then you can start working on the other stuff. But this will get you running and really it does a pretty good job. And Google has it here for a reason because it works and you can tell it's working because it picked up my email address. So if you're not picking up your email address in here, then you might have to go to a manual or a coded way. We can hit stop debugging. Final step here. So you can still see that we have workspace changes here. So we have to submit those. So hit submit, type something in here. Maybe we could do um, enhance conversions was added. And we could hit submit or publish. So that is almost it. Let's go back to our, let's go back to Google Ads one more time here. Last thing I want to touch on is if you go into your campaigns under here, uh, under your settings for the campaign, just make sure that you have this set up as one of the goals. So if you have your conversion goals here, just come under here. Account settings should pick, account default should pick it up. So if you don't, if you have it under campaign specific, you can come under here to choose campaign goals and you can check off the goals that you want to track. And that will make sure that you're actually tracking those under your conversions. Because if you didn't have form submits checked off, then it might not track that as a conversion in your ads account. So just make sure that's checked off. And that's it. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Take care and I'll see you guys in the next video.